Hello there everyone, it's Carol here from the Crafty Emporium. Welcome back. Thanks ever so much for joining me again. In this video I want to do something slightly different um, to the last video which was the autumn journal. I want to do something that's a little bit pretty and shabby cheeky. I just think that, you know, sometimes you need something pretty in your life, don't you? Makes you cheerful. So I'm using this digital kit from Pink Monarch Prints. All right, and I will put the link in the description box beneath the video. Um, so there's a, the particular kit that I'm using is called Summer Song, and there's ephemera and there's digital pages. Now I've printed mine off so that I've got two to a page. Obviously, you will print a whole page if that's what you want, but mine is printed landscape. Whereas if you don't alter your print settings. It will print it portrait all right so I'm going to show you some of the papers I've used some of the papers up already so they're not all here but just to give you an idea of some of the papers and it's really pretty colors so that's that one and then these are some of the others so it's it's a little bit of it's the same design um, altered slightly and different colours so this one hasn't got any text in the background but this one has and then oh still attached there's some um, text in the background of this one and then there's some music papers as well and that also comes in a variety of colours and this is a slightly bigger print of the floral version I'll show you a close up so really pretty really liked this kit and then there's some ephemera sheets as well so that you've got pockets and tags and note cards with decoration on without decoration on with the roses in the background with the text in the background really really pretty lovely little envelope some more tags so yeah, so that's the kit that I'm going to be using and it, as I say it's by Pink Monarch Prints and I'm going to be making a folio journal. So I'll see you in a second and we'll work on the cover. So I'm going to make a start on my cover and I'm using two sheets of this A4 white card and it's 300 GSM. Now it's called a linen effect and I got it from Hobbycraft, from my local Hobbycraft store. 300 GSM, I don't know what that is in pounds I'm afraid, so you'll have to do a bit of a conversion on, on Google. Now I'm going to um, give you an idea of how to score this if your paper is a different size to mine because you're in a different country, all right? So get a pen and paper handy. I'll wait. Are you back? Okay. So you can put this on pause um, so that you can do a little drawing like I've done here to just help you. So basically whatever size card you're using, on this right hand side you're going to do a half inch score line then from that score line to the edge of the card over here you need to find the center point once you've found the center point you're going to score it one eighth of an inch on that side and then from the center point again one eighth of an inch on this side so that you end up creating a quarter inch spine all right so that's that's the notes that I wrote you can put the video on pause at this point and make your own little note of that. Now for A4, I've actually got the, the measurements here, all right? So those are what we're going to use to score our card with. So, 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 the first sheet we are going to score at five and three eighths. One, two, three... Johnny caught a flea, put it in his pocket and he had it for his tea. <gasps> That's an old rhyme for our ages ago. <laughs> five and three eighths and five and five eighths. Sorry, I do I do go off track a little sometimes. And then at eleven and a quarter inches. 
Okay, and I'm going to do the same on the second piece as well. So five and three eighths. I won't do my little rhyme again. Five and five eighths. You see, this is what happens, you see, when you get older. All those things from your childhood that you forgot. <laughs> they suddenly come to the forefront of your mind. Okay, and eleven and a quarter. And then I'm going to fold and burnish. And when you're folding and burnishing, make sure that these are lined up at the top and the bottom because sometimes the card moves in your scoreboard and just scores it just slightly skewy. Finger press it down to start with and then use my bone folder to really burnish those marks. Okay, I'm going to go into the second piece. So that is what it now looks like so that you've got this flat edge here, a little tiny spine there, your flat edge here and then you've got this half inch flap. All right. So we're going to put the half inch flap in the middle. And the same with this other piece, put the half inch flap in the middle so that they're next to each other. And then, prompted by my glue, you then need a strong glue, one that one that you have faith in, that it's going to adhere. And we're going to glue these two flaps together. Now where, if I can show you it close up, you see that score line there? I hope you can see that score line. We're not sitting it on top of that score line we're slit it, sitting it just slightly to the right hand side of it so that it allows the card to bend all right so when we stick this one on i'm not sitting it on top of the score line so i'm going to put plenty of glue on but not so much that it oozes out left right and center but i'm going to make sure that that's well covered and then i'm going to spread it about a bit so that uh, I know that the whole of that flap will be adhered nice and safely so that it shouldn't cross fingered come undone a bit more there okay and then this flap I'm going to sit on top and butt it up to the edge of that score line So that it now looks like this so that when you open it up you've got that flap there that opens up and the same on this side as well now we can go off and go and decorate it on my outside covers so this one and this one I'm going to use this paper but then when I open it up on this flap I'm going to add a different paper on there now I when when I went to my printer to print this off I printed it um, so that I'd got two on a page you will have to look at your own printer if that's what you want to do um, to be able to do that otherwise it will print it off as one whole sheet if it prints it off as one whole sheet you'll need to remember it will print it portrait and not landscape all right so then you would need to cut your paper to size now i know that this is about the right size for my front covers so i'm just going to rip these edges because i want it slightly jagged and if you've got one of those tear rulers of which i do have but i don't like it um you can tear it so that you've got this lovely serrated edge look and top and bottom now I'm going to try not to do too much inking up in this because I want it 
a little bit more shabby chic and what I'm going to do I don't want it too vintage looking is what I'm trying to say um, I'm going to use my old paper distressing because this is a lovely it's got sort of a greeny tinge to it um, and I just felt that it would just highlight this really nicely so I'm just going to run it around the edge because where that paper is now ripped it will pick up the ink beautifully so I'm hoping that you can just see if I added the brown vintage photo um, or walnut stain it would be too dark and I wanted something that was just going to highlight the colour a little bit and I'm doing small circular motions and you might see me just dabbing off in my lid sometimes and it's because I've inked up the pad recently with my re-inker and uh, so it's sometimes picking up quite a lot of ink so at least just dabbing it off in the the lid I'm taking a little bit of the excess off and I'm going to ink up both pieces and then stick them onto my front cover but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this higher up the page so then I've got a border down at the bottom down here and I'm going to add another strip of one of the other papers on there to just give it a little bit of something different. So I'm going to go off and ink these up and stick them on and I'm just going to use my Kalal glue to stick this on um, and choose the paper that I want to have as a little strip at the bottom. And I'll do the same on the back cover as well and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. I've added all of my background pieces now to each of the sides so as you can see this is the front cover and I've added that little strip across the bottom and then if we go to the inside I've used these two pieces here now as you can see I've got a gap at the bottom here not worried about that I'll come back to that in a sec and then when you open these two up you've got a green one here and a cream one here cream one here green one here close those back up and then that's the back cover okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two flat pockets on here what I mean by flat is I'm just cutting out a rectangle gluing around three sides and sticking it in place so that it's flat to the paper because there isn't an awful lot of space to allow for any kind of bulk now normally with pockets I'd add a flap on the sides and on the bottom to make it a little bit dimensional so that you've got a bit of space to put something in the pocket but in this instance I need it to be flat so I'm using these three get the other one out as my pocket pages right so which colour do I want where so I think I might have the music one here and what I'm going to do is I know that the width is the same size as these so it's the depth of the pockets that I need to work out and I want them to be yeah about three inches deep so that I've got a little bit of a gap at the bottom so that it matches up with what's at the top and then three inches deep takes it up to about here on the page which then gives me a deep enough pocket to fit something in so I'm going to cut one two three four and I think for this one I might as well use the green hadn't I yeah I'll use the green for those two and then this back one I'm going to do something different with so I'm going to go and cut those four pockets out and then I'll come back in a in a second I'm just going to stick this last pocket in place so I'm just going to glue it around the three sides so the two side ends and the bottom so if you're using directional paper just make sure that uh, that you're doing it across the bottom and not across the top yeah done that before now okay and then that will sit on there and as I say because I know my papers are all the same size I know that these will line up 
with these background papers. So I've got my two pockets here so that I can put something in there and something in there. And then when I open it up, I've got my two pockets on each of the ends. So again, I can put something in there and something in there. Now for these two back pieces here, I want to do a slightly different pocket. So I've cut out my sheets already and I need a pencil for this. So I know that I'll need it at the bottom here and I'm just going to pull it just slightly to the side so that I can see where the bottom of this background paper is because I want to cut it down to just above that. So I'm just going to mark it there. Okay, so it's only a little tiny pencil mark, just just there. And then the top, I'm going to mark about ooh, an inch-ish in. And I'm going to cut from that pencil mark down to that pencil mark. So I'm going to line the pencil mark up with that ridge that's in my paper trimmer and make sure that the pencil mark at the bottom is also lined up with the ridge and I'm going to trim the paper off <gasps> like that <laughs> so that I end up with a piece looking like this now then this piece will sit on here so that I can access the pocket that way I now need to do the same thing with this one, but do it in the, on the opposite sides. So I'm going to mark it about an inch-ish in at the top. And then the bottom bit, I will mark across the bottom here and then cut off that way. Okay. Or the other thing that I can do is I can put them together. And then I know then that they're identical. So if I just run my pencil along that edge there and there, now I can see where I need to trim that bit off. And I can use my wire so then these two pieces will then sit here and here okay so that it makes a slightly unusually shaped pocket now what the other thing that I could do is where this has got a corner I could actually just get my scissors and just round it off a little bit which just gives it a slightly nicer finish to it Okay, so I'm going to ink those up and then I'm going to glue them in place by putting glue down this one long edge and across the bottom and up that tiny short piece there. I'll glue those in place and then I'll be back. As I said before, I, I want the pockets to be fairly flat so it's a little bit difficult to kind of decorate them up. So I'm going to be adding some decoupaging on them but I've also found in my box these two pieces of washi tape and so what I thought I would do is I'm going to add this washi tape up here so I don't know whether you can see but it's got gold metallic in it and I just thought it added enough prettiness to it to give it that little bit of glitz and glam so I'm just going to do a line of glue there because as I say I don't trust I do not trust my washi tapes, any washi tapes. So I'm just going to straighten that edge off first. And then add that up there, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a border of the pocket above the washi tape. And then I can trim off that excess. Pretty, me likey. Okay, 
the same on the other side. And leave that little bit of a border just above the washi tape. So that it looks like that. And then what I thought was on the inside one. Let's have a look at this rose coloured one. So I've got this rosy coloured washi tape, which is very much like the paper. Well, oh, actually, it looks pretty on there. Ooh, we might have to do a, an edge on that pocket. Okay. So, put a line of glue down the edge. A very wonky line of glue that was. Now I'm going to extend the washi tape beyond the pocket edges because I need to trim it off at unusual angles. And I'm going to leave that border edge of the pocket again. Okay, now then, this one, you have to overhang it by quite a bit and trim it off at an angle. So I'm just going to pull it back and then finger press it so that I've got a creased line and then if I lift it off I might need it nearer to me just bear with I can see that crease there okay that's the line and then that fits in down there nicely and then this one goes that way and then lift that bit up to go that way. Oh, I like that. That is pretty. Okay, I'm going to stick my, carry on sticking my washi tape on put that one on there oh no might be a bit busy I have to find another one um, and I'm going to call this part done all right so at least now you know how to make the cover how to decorate how I'm decorating mine up and in the next video I'll start to go through the ephemera pieces that I'm going to make and how I'm going to add the pages to this journal folio journal I should say Thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye for now.